Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey, Jay, first and foremost, thank you for taking my call. Mm-hmm. How you doing? I just, did you know I was a Protestant debater? I'm just going to ask you. Did I know what? Did, did you know I'm a Protestant debater? Is that why you saved me for last? Uh, I didn't save you for last. I mean, it just comes up in the queue, so I have no idea who you are. Okay. No, I was just wondering. Uh, I thought maybe you want to close out the stream with a, with a bang. <laughs> I mean, is it going to be a bang? I don't know. You tell me. Well, I had an issue with um, some of the misrepresentations you gave about Protestant theology earlier. Um, we can talk about um, okay. natural theology or soteriology. Um, and you also mentioned issues with the biblical canon. So uh, wh which of those would you like to discuss? Uh, let's you, you pick whatever you want to talk about. It's uh, in, in open forum. We give you guys the, the floor so you can make whatever arguments you want. Right, so so the soteri uh, soteriology okay. of the Protestant, um, we, we can start there. We'll okay. start there just because we have things in common like the scripture and, and you know common history. So okay. I want to I want to mention that throughout the scriptures, um, you made fun of imputed righteousness earlier, and you you inadvertently you may have not realized this, but the word imputed is used about five times. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it means what you think it means. Um, so so yeah. Do you know what the word? Do you know what the word concept fallacy is? Right, right. No, no, I'm not, I'm not making the word concept fallacy. No, I'm asking you if you know what it is, though. Yeah, if, if the word means this, it has to mean this one thing in every, in right. every context. So it's texts are interpreted, right? So the fact that imputed is used does not mean that the classical Protestant definition of imputed righteousness is true. And that flips around to you because it can be in the use that I'm using it. It can be that. It can't be that if you are a Trinitarian. Well, let, let me explain to you why, because you, you, again, you misrepresented the way that... I haven't misrepresented. I was a Calvinist uh, seminary student. There's nothing I rep misrepresented in the, the Reformed uh, Classical Reformation Doctrine of Imputation. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm not talking about Calvinism. I'm talking about evangelical Christianity, biblical Christianity. Okay, well, uh, how do you know that you're the biblical Christianity? I mean, wouldn't the classical reformers have a better claim to that than you? Well, we got to understand that the church is always in reformation. It is always being reformed. Well, that's what you Spirit. think. That's what you think, but I don't think that. I think that's a heresy. So, okay, so let's let's go to the common ground we have, which is the inspired scriptures. So, when we go to the I don't think you have the right scriptures. I'm sorry. You don't have the right scriptures. Uh, what do you mean I don't have the right scriptures? I don't believe you have the right canon of scripture. So you don't even have that. Do you believe in the 27 books of the New Testament? I do, but I also believe in the Deuterocanon. Okay, well, we can leave out the Old Testament. Let's deal with the New Testament, because I want to... I, wanna well, really I mean, well, we're gonna, you said leave it out, but uh, I mean, I want to know what your epistemic principle is for knowing who determines what books go in the Bible. Um, we would use... Or I, well, I would use... I can't say we. I would use textual criticism. Well, no, I mean, y you would use that, not we. So th there's not actually a Protestant church. Well, we, most of us, majority of us would use textual uh, well, criticism. Uh, so, why well, am I supposed to, how do you know to follow the majority on that? It's all arbitrary. Well, be, well obviously. Well, I why is it obvious? I'm asking you why it's obvious. You're saying it's obvious. We all follow this. I'm asking you why. How is that not because arbitrary? God left us a divine artifact to be able to. Well, that's begging the question that you have the right artifact. I'm bringing that into question. Because well, I, I can. That, that's that's a valid question. Let me answer. Let me answer that. Okay, and First, so hold on. You re, you recognize that it was the reformers that you split from that decided to remove the Deuterocanon, right? No, no. See, this is a common misconception. No, it's that, not. Um, no, it's the not. Apostolic churches might have. No, it's not. Didn't remove. Yes, they did. You don't have. So we at least have a principle for canonicity. You don't have that. And by the way, the same textual scholars that you're going to appeal to ended up deconstructing the whole text. They, they went towards higher criticism. So you're just basically picking the textual scholars that are conservative that agree with you and your presupposition. So how is that a principle for knowing what the canon is? That's not the principle. The principle is we can, as, as, when we go back in time throughout history, uh, uh, closer and closer to we, the time of... We Christ, or you? We, there is no we. You said there's not a we, there's only me. Okay, we have to examine... We who? You, you keep saying we. You and I. You and I. No, I'm not part of your church. You're not part of my church. I'm asking for your epistemic principle for knowing canonicity. What is it? History. That's a meaningless statement. History. 
Whose history? What historians? What church fathers? Well, again, we would have to be able to uh, accumulate the data. We, we sift through the data and see what's the most. Yeah. So uh, you don't have a church. You leave the canon up to a bunch of academics. And in the Protestant Reformation, when the canon was left up to academics, where did that lead? How did that go? It, it can go one of two ways. It How did it go in the Reformation? Well, we know that the 27 books were absolutely... Do you, do you, I'm out. asking you about what happened in the tradition of textual criticism after the Reformation in terms of Luther's descendants. What happened in Tübingen? What happened in those in Wittenberg and those those universities? Where did they go Tübingen, with textual scholarship? I know they started taking things out. I understand that. I'm not I, and they them. didn't just do that. They went in the direction of higher criticism and they deconstructed the whole text because they lost the principle of authority, the church, which you don't have. No, but see, you have that backwards because in the Protestant... No, you have it backwards. You don't have a church. You just said there's not a we, there's just I. It's James, you. We are the church. You are the church. You don't have a church. You you can't even tell me what the canon is. You said leave it up to scholars. I can tell you that. Can I no, you can't. You, you said but history. Here's how I know. You said history. Here's are you the same dude that was in here like three months ago saying all the same stuff? Jay, you're not letting no, me so you're the same idiot that came in. you lose this debate every time and you can't you never let me finish and then you, you don't make an argument later. you say the same dumb stuff every time that's the third time this guy has come saying the exact same thing and this guy all he ever does is repeat we look to history we look to textual scholars and then i ask him his epistemic principles for why that's the thing that we do and he just repeats it again literally the dumbest protestant i've ever argued with. notice it's the same argument you do with the atheists too like i'm gonna arbitrarily pick the standard it's just this act, it's just this like, we just do God, this we all know means. this it's just this it's like dude no. Oh my gosh! That, if, and if he hadn't, this is this is actually the fourth time. This is actually the fourth time that that dude has done the exact same thing, and then he acts like like I know who he is. Did you wait for it because of me? Because you knew I'm a Protestant apologist. Like, did I? You're a, a random gray profile. I have no idea who you are. No, I didn't wait for you. By the way, it's still open forum. Uh, now I'm hyped up, but I mean I'm not going to put up with that same dumb argument that the guy makes. He comes in here every three months and says the exact same thing. So it's just a complete waste of time. Uh, and he doesn't even know like what the classical Protestant doctrine of soteriology is. Well, I'm not that. I'm an evangelical. We just look at the history and the facts. And when those facts don't agree with the arbitrary <laughs> standards. <laughs> yeah, <of> right. <laughs> like, and, like the most naive approach to, to epistemology, right? Like, well, we, we just all, you know, to, we, we all uh, take a consensus and we sign up and we all agree, right? It's like, because I, I've, I've seen you critique Darwinism, and I understand the critiques as far as the origin and how it's related to, like, scientism and, and all those other things. But what I'm confused about, Jay, is that it, it does seem to me that natural selection does happen. Yeah, I don't have a problem with, uh, with natural selection. Sure. Okay. So, um... So animals change, but only a certain to a certain degree. Is it something like that? Uh, I, I, yeah, it seems like I would have to say that. Yeah. Okay. Do we know exactly how much that is? Well, I'm not a geneticist, so I couldn't tell you the limitations within you know various species code that that limits the mutations. So that I couldn't tell you. I don't. I don't know enough about that. So I guess maybe a more specific question would be. As Orthodox, would I have to reject all of Darwinism or or just to a point? Because, I mean, I think my confusion is I know you critique Darwinism a lot, but like you just said, natural selection is real and animals do change. Well, I think I've been pretty precise, too, that my critique is about the idea of um, aeons of time, first of all. Uh, and then that, that aeons of time, uh, millions and millions of years could somehow produce different species. And given the lack of evidence for that, that it's a, a wild right. hypothesis. So if Darwinism is going to make good on that, they really should have a lot more weight behind, a lot more evidence behind the claims. Um, I need more right. than, uh, you know, Dobzhansky looked at flies in a jar and therefore uh, transmutation of species. So my, my main issue is transmutation right, of species. Right. Transmutation of species, yeah. So animals do change within the same species sure. yeah. Yeah. for natural selection, but they don't transmute. And I, I'm pretty sure that's true, Jay, because like they've done those experiments with like simple organisms, and they can't get down to like a one cell organism. Right. Like, it won't 
maintain homeostasis, right? That's my understanding, yeah. But again, I, I, I'm not yeah. a, a biology guy. I don't know genetics. I've just read, you know, kind of literature of yeah. the, the polemics of it. So that's why I stick to the philosophical critique and say, yeah. well, okay, if, if Darwinism wants me to, no, I, if they want to convince me of like zillions of years and all this stuff, I need more than flies in a jar. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you're saying. It makes a lot more sense now. Hey, that's all I needed, Jay. Thanks a lot. Sure, for yeah, time. great questions. And um, I don't have, uh, so people kind of get tripped up on this too, like when it comes to specific dates for the earth and I, I don't have specifics on all these things. And when it comes to, uh, you know, astronomical theories, I don't have, I'm, I'm a skeptic. And I think I'm justified in being a skeptic in those domains because I don't trust and I don't, I don't have enough uh, <coughs> good argu <coughs> argumentation from the system <coughs> and the normie uh, arguments. For example, the way, the, let's just take the, the stupid example of how planets form. The normie story of planets forming is the belly button lint theory that dust in space just starts spinning and then it contracts and collects and over a zillion years becomes a planet. That's the normative view of where planets come from. Okay, I don't. I think that's dumb. That was ridiculous. Do I know uh, the specific mechanics of how God made planets? I don't. I don't have a hard theory on that, but that is dumb. So I don't believe that. Um. Do I know if uh, geocentrism or heliocentrism? I don't have an, a position on that. I'm fine with whatever being the case. I don't care. And it has nothing to do with Roman Catholics and the Pope. Okay. So if Robertson Genesis makes a good argument for geocentrism, okay. I don't, I, I'm not committed to any of those things. Like it's fine with me, either one being the case. I don't really care. And uh, the guy who called in about flat earth with his crazy comments at the beginning saying that the apostles didn't exist. I mean, uh, I've, I don't I don't believe flat Earth because I don't their arguments don't convince me. I've, I've watched uh, plenty of their their debates, plenty of their presentations for hours and years. I, no, I don't, don't don't find it convincing. And then they all they all act crazy and say, "Oh, you're a baller." Uh, are you, have you thought about ever doing like just a stream on uh, Wolfgang Smith? Uh, I forgot. So that would have been a, a, a good critique. You know, of Darwin especially, Cosmos and Transcendence would be a good a good book to do a, a talk on. But I forgot. I was just gonna say because like you're the one that introduced me to that book mm -hmm. back in the day on the Discord, and I just realized that the only content of you talking about it was you know in those older Discord conversations. That's so, a good point. Yeah. No, I've I totally forgot stream, about the book. I would send it to everybody. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll try to remember to do that. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, so I, think, uh, I was just going to say, because Wolfgang Smith, I think, is a geocentrist. So, you know, if you have all these, you know, astronomical nerds coming at you, that might satisfy their their autism. Yeah, I mean, people in the chat are trying to get all this. Uh, so uh, there's people think that, like, the only biblical cosmology is to adopt uh, whatever YouTube nonsense that they heard about Flat Earth. Okay, uh, so John Damascus says that it really doesn't matter whether the Earth is a ball, uh, a circle, or uh, is some sort of flat with a dome. And I, I don't, I don't have any opinion on this. I, I, I'm not buying into normie stuff, but I also don't have to buy into. I mean, look at the guy that was in here, right? The, the representative of flat Earth, telling me that John and the apostles didn't exist. I mean, it's just, it's always just, it always devolves into some total idiocy of the person who's trying to defend this position. And again, I've listened to hours and hours of their debates and their stuff, and I just don't find it convincing. I'm sorry, but um, if, if somebody wants to send a, a sane flat earth person uh, who doesn't go off into all this just insanity, then uh, okay, yeah, fine. Send that person uh, and the rest of these uh, loons can move on. Oh, you believe that we're spinning at 60 million miles an hour? I don't, but I didn't affirm any of those things. Oh, you believe NASA? No, no, no. It's a, that's it's a non sequitur. My doubting of you does not mean that I believe everything NASA says. I have a healthy, warranted skepticism on all these positions. And I look at what is the most convincing to me. And the most convincing to me is that it makes more sense that there's a creator uh, than any of this aeons of muck turning into beings and, and, and evolving to have consciousness. None of that makes any sense to me.